morning, everyone. This is Kathleen from Be Again Books, and I'm happy that you're joining me this morning. Welcome. I want to talk to you today about ephemera and stuffing pockets and where to find ephemera and how to make ephemera. I hope that this will be a helpful video. And remember, this is with beginners in mind. So many of you well, already know these things, but I am thinking particularly beginners. We're decorating in this book. And, you know, we we put in several pockets the other day, and, and these now all need little, little things in them. So let's talk about that for a minute. There's two things you can do. You can find ephemera, like antique ephemera. That's what I like best, is to find perfect things that match and and that are interesting and that would be fun to look at later. So this, this journal is kind of a winter blues journal. That's kind of what I'm thinking of it as. And so I, I am looking for blues and rust and brown and... Um, those kind of grayed tones that last through the winter until we get some spring flowers. Anyway, so let me talk first about finding vintage ephemera and some of the things that I have. So I have a whole drawer full of vintage ephemera that I typically use. And we talked a little bit the other day about vintage ephemera and I use the same the same types of things. I like postcards, then you can write on the back. I like um, things like this vintage computer punch card. It's blank on the back, and this happens to fit the colors perfectly. I have these little, just little papers, little bits of paper, little receipts, little calendar pages. Here is a, a flash card another receipt. I really like to use these old um, vintage prescriptions because they're always blank on the back and the paper is always really kind of interesting. And things like game score sheets. Sometimes I can find in an antique store or a thrift store uh, a vintage pad of paper and so I can, you know, pull a sheet of that out. This is really nice paper. And, and then just fold that and put it in the book. So I have those kinds of ephemera and I, I tend to fold, I tend to fold off so that it's off. And that's because when you run into vintage ephemera, very seldom is it folded neatly and carefully. Most of the time it's bent and torn and, and so I, as I try to mimic that aged bit of ephemera, then, then I try to fold things a little bit off. With these, um, these vintage papers, I don't very often distress those anymore, or, or I just put them in as is. Every now and then, I might put a stamp or some distress ink on it but I tend to just kind of leave it. Whoever gets it can just see it in all of its glory. Yeah. Okay, so where do I find this stuff? I find them in thrift stores. Often I find old postcards in thrift stores. Um, but I also have a couple of places online that I purchase ephemera. I like this, it's called Sip Monk on Etsy. Sip Monks, but if you search for it on Etsy, you have to just say Sip Monk, and then it will come up. And they have a lot of really fun, just pieces of ephemera. And, and so I will purchase things. The other, the other shop that I often purchase from is uh, Leslie Spears, my friend. I have talked about her before. She has some really fun things, and her shop is Vintage Paper Emporium on Etsy. One of my favorite things that I get from Leslie are these little bits of calendar, 
and and so until I run out of them, I think I might have cleaned her out actually, but until I run out of them, I usually always put one of these somehow in the journal. This is a calendar from April 1966. So there are several pieces. And then let me show you what else that I have that I really like to use. So I have another drawer in my file cabinet with all of these end papers from gutted books that I want to use in a journal. I will often tear out these end papers because they might have a little bit of writing on it, but often they're just blank and I really like that. So this one's going in this journal and I really love it when I can find one that is big enough that I can cut it in half and sometimes, hooray, they have this other little piece that is attached. So I really like to find those and so one of those is going in this one. And then often you get these really fun colors and that match the journal. And, and this one has this wonderful foxing on the edge. I love that. So this will just be like something like a journal paper. Okay, and, and then this is another way I make ephemera. Because other than finding ephemera, the other way you can create ephemera is to make it. So then I look for interesting papers. If you've seen me often, I will use this. This was just a, a little book that I found in, I think Tuesday morning or somewhere where they sell a lot of, of like blank journal books. And, and I liked the square holes. And so I look for papers that, that are vintage or that can be made to look vintage. And then all I do is just um, fold them. And then they can just fit into a pocket or behind a tuck spot. I also use a lot of my offcuts from the 12 by 12 papers. I will save those because I cut them down to print on them. I will save these specifically for ephemera. It's already coffee dyed and easy to, to fit in there. So I just fold it down and put a little something on the top. And if I'm careful to put that little topper on just the one side, then it can still flip easily. And this would be fun even to put over the top of the page. So here's another off cut from a 12 by 12 paper, and I just distressed around the edges, then a little stenciling on the back, and that makes a pretty good tag. I can then come along and, you know, take a piece of lace and, you know, make, make a little topper. So that's, I guess, the other thing that I need to define is what is a topper? And a tag topper is something that, like a tie, a bow, a strings that are tied, or some other fiber or a piece of paper or something that goes at the top of the tag and, and helps you grab onto it to pull it out of the pocket or it just makes a little decorative, a nice little decorative something. So if I just take my stapler and put that at the top, then that, that makes a cute little topper for that tag. Another thing I do is I use the offcuts from my coffee dyed papers. I just fold them. I'll put sometimes just a little um, embellishing at the, at the corner. Um, I coffee dye index cards. I coffee dye guest checks then I can come along and, and embellish those if I want. Or, if not, I can just leave them plain in the journal. So here's a little embossing that I've done on, this, on the side. So that goes in there. Here's just a regular piece of ledger paper. I just did the same little corner punch, 
fold it up and I can coffee dye that or do some inking or smushing and then I have a piece of ephemera ready. Especially I like to do papers for the large pockets. Making tags and ephemera, pockets and tags, to decorate junk journals, that's, that's why the channel exists. And many of the channels that we, we love to watch, um, that's what they do. You know, they give us ideas for making ephemera tags and, and other journaling cards. And I can also mention that often when you buy a digital kit, you, you get ephemera pieces that are designed for tags or journaling cards. And this book, um, I am not using digitals in here, so I didn't want to necessarily talk about digitals this time, but um, those are always available and, and handy to have when you're needing things to stuff into pockets. Okay, so when I use paper like this, I will do these casual folds, and sometimes I will just do what I call a fancy fold, and I have a playlist with all kinds of fancy folds, several, like eight or nine fancy folds in there, but this is the easiest way, and this is just some vintage paper that I want to fold um, and leave. I don't want to necessarily decorate it. I don't want to necessarily coffee dye it. It's, it's vintage as it is, but I just want to fold it a little bit more fancy. So I'm just going to fold it over here and leave this little one spot. I have directions about this in the fancy fold, but, but I'm, I'm just going to show you quick how to do this. So fold it over to the left like that, and then flip it over and against the folded side, I'm gonna come back and leave the same the same gap there, okay? And that's just kind of, it gives this little waterfall edge over here. It's kind of nice, very easy, quick, and it gives you a nice piece of journaling paper. Okay, now I want to do a, just a couple projects with you to show you how easy it is to make ephemera when you don't have vintage pieces. But this is a nice little pile of ephemera now for the journal that I can stuff pockets. Okay, so I showed you how to do, um, this is the fancy fold that I just showed you how to do. But look, I've got this, I'm gonna make just a little bit of a, an embellishment here with a stamp. I'm gonna stamp this butterfly. Actually, maybe I will do the leaf first. So I've got a leaf and a butterfly. And I think I'm just gonna stamp that first. And then we'll put the butterfly on there as well. So now what happens is that little label thing is, and I could put a sticker over it, I liked stickers, but now that, that just becomes part of a deliberate design. Okay, and then that just now slips into a pocket. We'll put it with the others. I also look for these little um, kinds of notebooks that I can dye, and um, I could put a little bit more um, of the chalk behind here because that would create another layer. And I just, I love layers. But we've got the smushing in the back, so I think we'll just let that go. But another thing I do want to tell you about is um, it's fun sometimes to just cut these little interesting things, text strips to put, to put on ephemera. This is from an Emily Dickinson poem book. And this phrase says, had this, day, had this one day not been. I think that's kind of interesting. And I'm just gonna put that right there off center because, you know, that's what I like. And there's another little uh, piece of ephemera 
journaling paper that can go into a pocket. I want to show you how to make this little uh, accordion journal paper. So here's here's the paper. I'm using graph paper because um, the book is blue. And I'm just going to fold down a piece. This I have found out of a book. And so I've trimmed that down. And I'm going to just put some glue along here. And I've trimmed the paper. It was just whatever size it was long, but I have trimmed it so that it is as tall as this. And I'm just going to glue that here onto this picture. But you could, if you wanted, you could just move this over to this edge and have it. But I want to have as much of this available to journal on. And now I'm just going to fold it until I run out of paper. So we'll fold it that way. And then I'm going to come back. And fold it there. And now I'm just going to take this and fold it back on itself. You know, I can do whatever I want to do on this now. I can finish distressing it. I could smush it. I could paint it with coffee or whatever else I want to do. But now that is, that's just kind of a nice um, little piece of artistic handmade ephemera that can slip into a pocket. I like that. Okay, here is the, this is this pretty postcard. I don't have to do anything to her because she's perfectly vintage on her own. But I w am intrigued by this hat, the ruffle, the lace in the ruffle and these crinkled ribbons. And so I just thought immediately about crinkled ribbon and how pretty that would look. Um, I can't hardly decide between the lace because the lace would also be pretty but I really like this blue. And I want to show you how to make, um, there is not enough room, obviously, to put a bow on the top like I often do. So I need to do something on the side. And I know where I want to put this in the journal and I need the bow to be on this side. So I'm going to take my hole punch and I'm going to make of holes right there but let me just show you how to do it with the ribbon so I want to go down and then back up okay so that's that's easy enough and in some of the old um, antique cards that's all they did they would just have you know that much on the side or sometimes they would bring it through again and have it come out but one of the things that I like to do is to tie just a little half bow. So you just tie it as if you're making a bow, but then you pull the one through and then um, tighten it down a little, right? And then you can just um, cut that a little bit uneven and adjust how you like it and then put a little bit of glue so that it doesn't come apart and I'm just going to put a little tape on that to hold it until it dries and then then that just kind of gives you a little bit of fancy Okay, so there's um, there's a few little ideas uh, for your ephemera and either handmade or all of this whole stack of fun vintage things. Thanks so much for being with me. I hope that was helpful. I'm going to go stuff the things in the pockets and you'll be surprised when I do the flip through what I have used in the book. 
I'll see you with the next step in our step-by-step -step series, and that is um, fibers and fabric in the junk journal. So I hope you'll join me with the next video. We'll see you again.